As our beloved meme coin gets flipped by another inflationary cryptocurrency, USDT, we take a look at which other legacy cryptocurrency could explode next. Now, if that sounds like a whole lot of hype, you're damn straight, it does sound like some hype, but there is real potential for it to happen, and it's happening right now. So we're gonna dive into that and a ton of cryptocurrency news. Stick around for that. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, bell notification icon so you're updated as these cryptocurrency videos come out. And of course, like the video up. It goes a long way to helping out the YouTube channel in the YouTube algorithm. Let's start with the coin market cap, $2.2 trillion. Now we're only a trillion dollars just a few months back, so things are really starting to heat up, but I still think there's a lot of time to go in this market, especially if we get a major correction. That could flood out, flush out some of the weak hands, and that could lead us to another good accumulation before we start to spike up again. So I definitely think we still have more time, but I'm still aware that we could get a solid flush out. Now, Dogecoin has started to fall a little. We've just been flipped by Tether. Cardano is sitting at 45 billion. Polkadot still has not had its next run. However, it is consolidating above its highs, just like Cardano is. And of course, Binance has just come off its major run of last week. Ethereum, all-time highs yet again. Bitcoin also looks like it's consolidating above its highs. Now, the cryptocurrency that I'm having question, which I think is starting to make its big move, is of course Litecoin. We've been following it for some time. We have our plan. Plan has not yet said to execute. However, just in the last couple of days, we have broken through the resistance levels and I think it's looking like a very good time to enter. At least that's what I'm doing in my own portfolio, which we'll cover at the end of this video as well, our long-term hold with some trading in between, but nothing that takes up a hell of a lot of time. That's the strategy here, looking for the safer bets in cryptocurrency throughout this bull market. Thank you guys on Twitter. I've gotten active again in the last couple of months, go and follow me over there. Coinbase has been listed uh, by now at 3.30, which was just a, a day ago, or wait for lower prices. Majority of you, four out of five people said you're going to wait for lower prices. Now, let's dive into the cryptocurrency news. Now, I've got this piece here, and I think this is partly the reason for Doge's success in a boom, and then also why I think it's potential, potentially likely that we're going to see Doge fall. And I think it's very well granted here. We're looking at Wall Street bets. We know Wall Street bets from early this year, pumped GameStop and looking at XRP and Dogecoin earlier on as well. Wall Street bets reinstates ban. So they got rid of the ban for about a day and now they've reinstated the ban. And I think that may lead to a bit of the deflationary price or at least the drop, I should say, on Dogecoin. So they've said here, Wall Street bets reinstates ban on cryptocurrency discussions citing Bloomberg coverage. So they didn't like the Bloomberg coverage and said, screw you guys, we're going to cancel crypto yet again. However, the decision has been reversed after the recently published Bloomberg article. So they allowed it and then Bloomberg pu published an article and then now they have banned it again indefinitely. So we know the power of Wall Street Bets Reddit able to push cryptocurrencies. And if it's not being talked about as much, not being pumped as much, I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that maybe it'll have some time just to cool off. You know I love Dogecoin. Some of you get it mixed up thinking that I hate Dogecoin. I absolutely love it. I, I, it's a fantastic meme and a fantastic way for people to get into cryptocurrency. Doesn't mean it's going to go up indefinitely. And some cool down periods, if you're patient, allows people to get into the market and then hopefully ride the next pump, whether that's in three months six months, 12 months, maybe three years, who knows? The last one took quite a lot of time and there was a huge buildup. Looking over to Reddit, these are just citing the articles of where it happened. Two days ago, after much deliberation, we've decided to allow for discussions about only BTC, ETH and Doge. Looking over to the next article, which was one day ago, they have now banned it again. So uh, Wall Street Bets, is a big subreddit, avoid using, sh uh, getting shield every corner, we've automatically removed content that mentions small caps, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and SPACs. So that's where we're seeing it over there. Fear and greed is up again. We have just begun creeping into that extreme greed zone. So the way I'm looking at this is we are going yet another push into new all-time highs and some cryptocurrencies are getting a bit pretty strong run up as well. And I think this next section of the altcoin season is looking like legacy markets. What the hell are legacy markets? Doge. 
Litecoin, stuff from 2017, like EOS is having a move, IOTA, Ethereum Classic, which does nothing. You know, all of these coins do nothing. Sorry if it offends, but we've got to look at stuff that is actually making a really strong progress, progressive move in this current market. And if we want to believe that they're doing stuff that they're not, that's your own prerogative. Deep down, they're fun, Dogecoin, legacy, it's doing well. That's why we're looking to the next lot of legacy coins. Google Trends, Dogecoin has out stripped even Bitcoin in the search volume. Blue is Dogecoin, green is Bitcoin. Everything yesterday went absolutely nuts, or at least this morning that is. Dogecoin at 100 in the search volume over the last seven days, comparatively speaking, compared to uh, compared comparatively to itself, Dogecoin, and of course, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and crypto search. So Ethereum is the lowest here, crypto, Bitcoin, and Doge well and truly up there. That's a good sign, especially as uh, next article references that Doge flips XRP, Ethereum and Bitcoin on Google, meaning the, the Google searches and surpasses Tether. But obviously now Tether has just flipped it again slightly. Now, are you going to choose? you got to choose sides here. It's all a war, remember? Dogecoin is just a bubble and a mockery of crypto. That's a Cardano founder. You guys should know him by now, Charles Hoskinson. Dogecoin was created as a joke. Hoskinson urged anyone who has invested in Doge to take your money and run before it blows up, stating that its price surge is unsustainable. That's pretty likely. We know that. It may go on another uh, consolidation period, just drop from here, you know, start to settle at around 10 to 20 cents, just where the previous high was. But if we see that breakdown, then this might be the last of the three legs up. If we're looking at well, a wave theory. Robinhood faces technical issues as Dogecoin jumps. So just like cryptocurrency, their trading platform had some delays while Dogecoin absolutely pumped. Obviously, I don't trade on Robinhood. It's a US app. I, if people ask me, I never suggest Robinhood. I would rather actually own the cryptocurrency myself because you don't own the cryptocurrency on apps like this. You just trade a product, a product which mimics the price of those cryptocurrencies. So if you want to withdraw them, you can't. They might bring that feature in later, but I'm not willing to, do, to wait and take that risk. BNB drops as Binance burns almost $600 billion worth of coins. So this might have been the reason for the, the run up, partly the reason. We know that Binance does burns and they're burning off some of their token to make the supply smaller. I have sold my Binance in my portfolios and bought Litecoin because I think we're going to see a pump on Litecoin and I think it's time for Binance to cool off. Even if Binance went up, I think there's more of a potential in Litecoin for now. Doesn't mean I'm going to hold it for three months, six months, 12 months. I'm just looking for those pump periods and then selling out and my main holds, of course, you'd see that on my Instagram is Ethereum and Bitcoin. That's where I like it. And we're going to look at that in the portfolio on SwiftX. If you guys have been following, we have the demo portfolio set up over there on SwiftX, which you can also find a link to in the description down below. Where else would it be? Turkey bans cryptocurrency payments. I'm just bringing this up quickly. I don't think anyone really cares if Turkey bans anything. Not that we hate the country. I think it'd be a beautiful place to visit and explore and the people, etc., etc. Just in terms of the government making these sorts of decisions, I think they're really screwing their people, especially with their their own currency, the lira, which has devalued against the US dollar, which we all believe will eventually collapse at some point in the next several decades. Some people think it's going to happen sooner, but history shows that it will happen at some point, but it's just a matter of timing when people think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen a long way down the track. The lira has shown it's devalued about 80% at the max. I think it's somewhere around 70% now against the US dollar. Looking at Decrypt, a trio of Ethereum ETFs set to launch in North America. Yes, this is Canada, not the US. Probably most people don't really care, but it's a good start. We're seeing three ETFs for Ethereum being launched. This is just all part of the, the news and the story, which I think eventually we'll see something in the US. Uh, who am I? Some guy on the internet, but it seems like the pressure is really starting to build. You can now earn Ethereum 2.0 staking rewards on Coinbase. So if you guys do have that, you can stake your Ethereum 2.0. Remember, it's going to be converted into Ethereum 2.0, so you can't convert it back. And then you can stake it over there on Coinbase. Again, you don't own your keys. You're leaving your keys on Coinbase. The benefit to it is it just makes the whole entire process a lot easier. And now that Coinbase is a public company, it's not guaranteed, but you would think that they are going to look after their clients a hell of a lot better in order to in continue increasing 
their uh, share price. So that gives a little bit of safety if you want to call it that. Now, this one was a massive headline and there are always massive headlines when we are looking at something from Raul Pal. 500 times. That's how much she believes crypto could surge. Now, I have started reading these in a lot more detail because these headlines are just crazy and you just think, what is this nonsense? But it's usually just a headline, just like we see with any crypto news that you see online or any news in, in general. When you get further into it, he's talking about a 500 times growth potential over the next 20 to 40 years. Uh, so that's what you can expect as us, the next generations, getting into cryptocurrency now, looking for a 500 over the next 20 to 40 years. I think that's reasonable. I, now it sounds reasonable. If you're saying 40 years, 500 times growth, especially with some of the cryptocurrencies which will show themselves this cycle, like maybe the chain links, the uni swaps, things like that, will potentially get this price, but we have to continue to track them. Bitcoin, maybe not 500 times, but it will do pretty well. Ethereum should do very, very well as well. Little news article for the Aussies, Australian remittance service taps crypto asset XRP, what? For cr cross-border payments. So a company here in Oz are looking to do some cross-border payments between uh, the Philippines and Australia. Obviously they're saying they're going to use XRP. Nothing has been brought in yet. Sounds typical of an XRP partnership. This is the legacy stuff. What the forks, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, see triple digit rallies. Let's have a look at this on the charts, but this is what I'm talking about in terms of Doge looks like it is starting the boom. Doge and Litecoin have merged mining. Doge came onto Litecoin, so they have the merged mining thing. If we see Doge go up, I am pretty certain we're going to see Litecoin. Not financial advice, not buy recommendations, etc. Do your own research, find out for yourself and really prove it to yourself rather than just listening to some random with a blue red Dogecoin shirt on the internet. Now I'm playing that down of course, but definitely do your research on this. Now we've crossed over to the charts. We've got Doge BTC open because at the end of the day, I'm all about increasing my Bitcoin holdings because I see Bitcoin going up against USD. So that's what I'm more favored in. I want the Bitcoin holdings to be going up. The dollar value of course is gonna continue going up as Bitcoin goes up through a bull market. Right now we see Doge cooling off from its high, sitting at 34 cents. This happened last time as well, had a big spike up. Let's throw it on log so you can see, huge volume up. And then we cooled down a lot from that top at around 10 cents, all the way back down to three and a half cents. So that was a 60% cool off. If we see that again, our top was around 50 odd cents, 47 cents, 60% down would take us 18 cents. Okay, so that's why we're looking at around that 15 to 25 cents. I did say earlier around 10 to 20 because the old previous top was around 10 cents. So that would bring us down about 80%. Should we break down from that, look to the next high. This is a long way, I know. That's a 96% drop. Not uncommon. So be careful. You don't want to get wrecked in these markets, especially if you've made some really good profit. I hope you've got your plan and you take your trades however you do. Uh, but for now, I like the look of Litecoin. And so if we take a look at the LTC chart, we have been waiting for quite a long time now. And this has broken through its all-time highs just a week and a half ago at 240. We're now in clear territory at the moment. We're getting very close to this new all-time, oh, getting close to the old all-time high to try and break into the new all-time high. And that is at around $420. So we're going for that 420, passing that point. But the big one that we've been watching is LTC BTC. You know we've been following this for months. It has just been on a massive, massive downtrend. But this week, we have broken out of the down channel, downtrend channel. That is a very good sign, plus a lot of volume at these lows. We have been covering this day count, March, looking for March as a low because we see other major, major turns in March. This was 2017, so four years ago, we saw a major turn in March and had a huge boom from that low in March in 2017, which was the start of the previous bull market as well. So these turns, these times have some good uh, harmony in them. Looking from this low point in March to the top, we had approximately 600% against Bitcoin value. So that means we could seven times our Bitcoin value. Got to get those numbers right, remember? So that's from the low. If we only get half of the seven times, 350 takes us to about point. 014, call it 0.015 for, you know, just have a little bit of uh, good times here, which means we're at 0.005 now, one, two. So we can basically triple 
our Bitcoin. Oh, nothing guaranteed. That's just my plan at this point here. And that takes us to the next trend line, which I think is very sustainable. Have a little spike through. That's a pretty good return for me. And that's why I sold off the BNB in terms of Dogecoin as well. Sure, Dogecoin can go up a lot more. That's fine. You do, you guys do you. This is just the way I'm playing this part because I want to increase my Bitcoin holdings right here. So that's Litecoin. Next charts we'll have a look at are BTCD. So Bitcoin dominance has absolutely been destroyed primarily by the majors going up in value. And of course, Dogecoin has taken a little cut out of that as well. We have seen a 51.5% low at the moment. This is market cap BTC dominance. So Bitcoin has gone down to about 50% of the entire cryptocurrency market space, whereas before it was at around 73, 74%. That was at its peak just a couple of months ago. Bitcoin itself just fallen under 62,000. This high is looking a little bit shaky at the moment, so we definitely want to see this push on from Bitcoin. But should it hold up at these new levels, at these higher highs and consolidate, that's another good sign for the old season to continue on because we don't want to see Bitcoin taking the show and bursting to new all-time highs all the time because everyone just starts to sell off and move into Bitcoin because it's less risky. So we want to see strength in Bitcoin, hold its position so that we can get some of that money flowing into the alts. The other thing, uh, the other chart I want to have a look at is the shit perp, which you know we're a fan of here. Ten and a half thousand on the shit perp. We were breaking through all-time highs at around that eight to 9,000 on the index just a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, how is this thing going to keep going? We had a little push down to seven. We're now at 10 and a half uh, with a top. Uh, we're, we're trading at all time highs at the moment. So this is a big thing for the shit coin. So it's basically all the shit coins using an index that FTX has put together. This is FTX Exchange, which we'll talk a little more about in future videos because it's a fantastic company. FTT is the token also doing fantastic things. Now let's recap the legacy markets and VeChain is a big one that you guys always talk about and you say I don't talk about it enough. VeChain has also seen a massive pump. It has doubled. Doubled in value is very good, but nothing like getting in so early on where you're getting 20 or 30 or 60 times your money. Getting a double is great, but it's getting very risky. But it also has seen big moves. This is the legacy stuff. The other big players that I wanted to have a look at are ETC, which we have never looked at before because it really does nothing. And this has pushed very close to all time highs, $46, currently trading just a short of $40. These were the highs set in late 2017, early 2018. So this is ETC, this is Charles Hoskins' other project. I honestly have not kept up with it because it does nothing. And looking at its Bitcoin value, it has just been decimated over its entire life cycle after the May pump. So it's just been down, 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 down. The last one we're going to have a look at is Bitcoin Cash. So these are the forks off the two majors. And Bitcoin Cash is also seeing massive moves at the moment. I bring these up just to make you aware of legacy market and the, the I wouldn't say the flip inning, but where the money may be transitioning into at the moment. And these are moving, but you can see how much they've been decimated, destroyed since the last bull market. So the, the catching up is huge. I don't believe they're going to get there, which is why I don't invest in them. But in terms of a trade, there might be a little good trade on here. Too high risk for me. I think Litecoin is where the money will, will come from because people still have a reasonably good feeling about Litecoin. These other ones, not so much. They've sort of fallen off the radar and they're just getting a little bit of headwind at the moment. Bitcoin Cash, $700 to $1,100. So it has moved up. But in terms of its Bitcoin value, it's been destroyed, absolutely destroyed. So they're the legacy. Legacy is actually getting a push through. Now, I want to bring up my other videos which I've got coming up later this week. Poker City, Yield App, Carva, Invictus Capital. I've got an interview that I'm organizing with the Horizon CEO, another legacy market which has pumped and TVK CTO interview has done and I'm going to post it for you guys as well. So stick around on the channel for these videos. Subscribe if you haven't. Like the video up. We're going to look at the portfolio just before we go but I wanted to give you a heads up of the videos that are coming up next and give you a rundown of what I've done in the portfolio. Sold Theta and ETH. I know it's risky. I love ETH, but I want to try and make some gains off these smaller cryptocurrencies. Litecoin, bought some more Link, some more GRT, some more DOT with these because I had bigger positions in them after they had both moved and uh, BNB as well. So I've sold BNB. I'm thinking about getting some Sol later, but I want to see these move first. I think Sol is a great project and will do very, very well. Uh, probably sell some of these off in the pump, but we'll cover that 
as we move on. This is the portfolio in SwiftX. You can see I've got ADA, DOT, LINK, GRT, LTC, and ZIL. ZIL is the smallest position, and the rest of these are pretty even except Litecoin. I basically sold all the BNB for LTC, and the rest of these are quite even. ADA has gone up a little bit, so it's moved up, but I wanted to keep them reasonably equal, and then ZIL was about half of these. You know, they've all moved a little bit, but essentially I want to keep the portfolio small, manageable, because that is the goal of this one. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, something easily replicable, but they are not financial advice or buy recommendations. I just want to see how we go with putting less time into it because a lot of people don't have time. They have their jobs and they can't spend so much time behind computer screens all the time. So this is what I'm doing with this portfolio itself. ADA, DOT, LINK, GRT, LTC, and ZIL, like you saw, what I've sold, what I've bought, and we basically started early February and a lot of the buys were done mid to late February, so at the peak of the last push up. So we're not doing too bad overall with a 67% gain since the last peak. Could have done a hell of a lot better if we just dumped everything into Doge, but this is the life of trading. So that's the video for today, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. Doge, I think we'll get to dollar at some point in the future, but at the moment, I think we are just cooling off a little bit. 50% sits at 27 cents. I'm gonna keep my eye definitely on this close. I need to close above that. Otherwise, we close below 50%. It's going to look a little bit harder for Doge to continue pumping in the short term. Let me know what you're liking the look of now or next. You know, I've got Litecoin. This is the one that we're looking at to next. The new newsletter is out. It's absolutely free. Subscribe to it down below. Cryptocurrency and investing. SwiftX link is in the description down below if you want to sign up there for the Aussies and play with your cryptocurrencies over there. I'll catch you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.